Hello, darlings. Welcome to Annoyed Gamer. I am back. Uh, apologies for last week's non-appearance of a show. Um, I got a little bit sick. Uh, I am prone to allergy attacks, and I got the mother, father, and great-grandparents of one uh, midweek last week. Kind of put me on my ass for a few days. What am I going to talk about? Well, I got three topics for you and and question, and I'm going to plow right into them. First up, I'm going to tackle one of the subjects I was going to talk about last week, and this is Aliens, Colonial Marines, Somebody has decided to get a class action lawsuit going against Sega and Gearbox for misrepresentation and false advertising and all this sort of stuff. And obviously a lot of people are like, yay! And then a lot of people are up in arms going, no, this is going to ruin video games because people are going to be held accountable for stuff. And me, I'm in the yay camp, to be honest with you. I'm also in the camp that says, how the fuck didn't this happen much earlier? The video game industry, over the years has been the masters of bait and switch. Master bait, ah, there you go, there's a pun for you. Seriously, bait and switch with regards to let's show you a preview. Let's show you this wonderful level, this wonderful level that actually isn't in the game. Let's look at this feature which isn't in the game. And then we pull it because of feature creep, we pull it because of DLC. And you know, it makes life hard for a PR person. I've been on that side of it too, thank you very much. Do I think this is a good thing? Well, I think it's not a good thing for Sega and for uh, Gearbox, but I do think this is going to be something that's gonna open up a whole can of worms. I think it's going to be very interesting how video game publishers work with the media in future because it's going to impact how previews and first looks are going to be handled. But I think it's also going to keep the industry a little more honest. We have to be upfront about it. We have to come out to the media and to the consumer, the guys who pay our wages, and say, yes, well, guess what? Hadley's Hope in our game doesn't really look like Hadley's Hope in the demo that we showed you. In fact, it looks like a pile of Ass. I'll be interested to see how this turns out because I think it's going to have really huge ramifications for the industry and not all of them are going to be negative. I think there's going to be some positive stuff where the journalists are going to step up and have to basically be super clean, super cool, understanding what's going on and saying, all right, we're not going to put out shit anymore. That is fluff. We want to back shit up. I think we're going into a, an interesting phase in the games industry right now. We do have new consoles coming. This is a chrysalis stage. The games industry can continue to grow and get strong, or we're going to end up with lots and lots of corporations dominating the games industry, releasing pile of crap iterations of a product every year, and the media not really questioning them. The media turn around saying, all right, well, there you go. There's this one, and here's the fluffy video. And then the consumers will just not trust anything and move off to find something else. Next topic. Earlier this week, a great disturbance was felt in the force, uh, as if millions and millions of gamers cried out in fear. Yes, EA, you've got the Star Wars license. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I obviously talked about the shattering of LucasArts, and, you know, I was kind of irate about it and you know that was kind of tinged with nostalgia as a few people pointed out when you know very validly in the comment section some would say the uh, efforts of LucasArts over the last couple of years have been either below par or absolutely shit and they wouldn't be wrong to be honest with you I mean yes I had the nostalgia of LucasArts in the uh, 90s and the early parts of 2000 basically yes I was really upset to see LucasArts go now the license has landed with EA. The entire gaming license is with one company. And I think this is down to basically Disney not really giving a shit and just wanting to go with whoever offered them the biggest paycheck. Had it been me as a, you know, if I'd have been lucky enough to be a custodian of the Star Wars franchise, we're gonna open this up. Who can do the best job for each particular type of game that we want that's gonna support the books and support the TV series and support the movies that are coming? Unfortunately, that's not the case. The license is now in the middle of the Death Star from Return of the Jedi. It is in the throne room. It is sitting next to the video game equivalent of Palpatine in Electronic Arts. And what can we hope for? Well, the rumor is that Visceral are going to be doing a Dead Space-esque Star Wars-y type game. Maybe this is 13, 13, they'll take that on board and we'll see Boba Fett with microtransactions and a plasma cutter. You know, Bioware, The Old Republic, Knights of the Old Republic in particular, which were two corking games. Everybody's saying now Bioware can have that back and give us KOTOR 3. Unfortunately, you've got to remember that this is not the Bioware that made KOTOR 1. This is the Bioware of Mass Effect and The Old Republic, and therefore I don't think we'd see the same level on KOTOR 3 that we got on KOTOR 1. Hell, I'd like to see KOTOR 1 and 2 up -raised re-released, put them on XBLA, put them on PSN. Let's talk about Battlefront, because obviously I know a lot of you like Battlefront, and yes, do we expect to see Battlefront go to DICE? Because Battlefront, Battlefield, Battlefelch, it makes sense. You know, BF, 
that's them. Personally, Battlefront is the one that I really care the least about. I played the first one, I played the second one. They were kind of enjoyable, but I'm not a big fan of running around a battlefield with a bunch of other twonks uh, online. I'd much rather have the more personal experience of something like Jedi Knight Dark Forces. I'd like to see Kalkatan back uh, and exploring the Jedi mythology, the expanded universe, which I don't think we will get to see coming out of EA. So, to wrap up, am I happy that EA has got this? No. Um, fortunately, we're going, not going to see anything on this for so probably 18 months to two years. We may see an announcement at the next E3 that the first batch of games will be coming out in time for the movies in 2015 when J.J. Abrams is putting lens flare on everybody's lightsaber. Disney did not do the due diligence. They basically did not do their jobs as custodians of the franchise. But what you expect, they are a big mega corporation who really don't give a shit about anything about money. So we shouldn't really be surprised. As for EA, you're on warning. You know, you thought it was bad when you messed up the SimCity launch and when Dead Space didn't sell as much as you expected because of microtransactions and silly, uh, um, you know, quotes from visceral developers uh, when Crisis 3, which wasn't actually a bad game, didn't sell because, again, people were too busy voting you the worst company in America. You think that's bad now? You start fucking up Star Wars, which is basically to a lot of people of my age and, you know, a little bit younger and older, this is our modern mythology. This is our King Arthur. This is our Grimm's fairy tales. You fuck this up this time, I will guarantee you that the SimCity shitstorm is going to look like a warm, soothing shower. So get your acts together and do right by the franchises. You do right by it and you'll have the fans back and people will love you and people will pay for it. Earlier this week, there was a brand new Wolfenstein announced and Bethesda put out a kind of shiny trailer with some music and uh, some CGI and some stuff and, you know, games coming out whenever. And that's all we saw was a couple of big Nazi robots being built and, you know, maybe London Bridge in the background and some guy on a bridge staring at these things. And you know what? It's Wolfenstein. We haven't had it in a long time, uh, or in any good form anyway. And you know what? It's nice to see these franchises come back. Unless you're Warren Spector. You know Warren Spector, the guy who created Deus Ex, which is still in my top 10 games of all time. The original Deus Ex on PC, it was a great take on what first-person shooters could be. It's also, of course, the Warren Spector of Epic Mickey 1 and 2. Epic Mickey 2 that was a buggy disaster. Yeah, Warren, look, um, got a lot of respect for you for what you did with Deus Ex. You haven't really done anything decent in several years, in my opinion. And for you to come out on your Facebook page and say, oh, look, just what we need, another dark, depressing shooter with Nazi giant robots. Well, let me just take issue with that particular quote uh, from you, Mr. Spectre. Uh, another Nazi giant robots. Well, there's the Wolfenstein ones. Anybody? Survey says, eh, eh. there haven't actually been that many of them. So I don't know what you're wittering on about. And you know what? I think it's great that Bethesda are bringing this back. And I think it's also great they've come out and said, guess what? We're not leveraging multiplayer into it. We're actually going to turn this into a great single player experience. They're going to do with this what they did with Dishonored. Dishonored was a great game. Or do you have a problem with that? Oh no, another first person y magic technology, hide bodies, rats game that nobody really wants. No, you know what nobody really wants is a buggy game full of Disney characters with shitty camera angles and wanky pretensions. Get back to your roots, go back and create something creative. Until then, STFU. And I mean that with all due respect after creating the Deus Ex franchise, which I love. Okay, on to the question. And this is a question that's actually been sort of like floated out to me via Twitter, Facebook, um, GT forums, etc. over the last few years. I mean, ever since I've been on Invisible Walls. And it's one I think a lot of people get when they stand in front of a camera or, you know, write and they have an audience that follows them. And it's basically how do I get started in the games business. So I'm gonna give you uh, Marcus Beer's Life a very, very quick and abridged version. Start the clock. Basically, early 90s, I was working retail in a video game store in Swansea. And I was also working part-time because, you know, ends meet, doing multiple jobs. I was working part-time selling ad sales, uh, doing ad sales at a newspaper, the Western Mail, in fact. And I suggested the editor of the newspaper they should do a video game column. He asked me to write a mock one, and he liked it. And, you know, I researched it, and it was Echo the Dolphin. And that was my first review, because they went and published it. And then I basically, you know, I got lucky. I started doing that for them every week and that led to uh you know a couple of other gigs once you get that first break and you that first thing things tend to evolve after that i was on a show called games world on sky one it's on you can actually find it on youtube if you search for uh btv 
Um, my character's name was Freebie, and it was me um, almost, what, 20 years ago, and uh, certainly, I don't know, 40, 50 pounds ago. But yeah, that's how I got started, and then, you know, I could have either carried on in, in TV and video game journalism, but I decided to make more money, and I went off to PR. And that's where I spent a lot of, uh, you know, the next 15 years, and PR was actually good back then because the industry was much smaller, video games was still a niche market, so it was much cooler, everybody knew everybody, and you know, it was, it was actually a route that a lot of journalists took to move into PR. Things started to change early 2000s, video games got cool and profitable, and you get people coming in from KFC and Pepsi and, and Gap and whoever else, and that's when it started to really fragment for me, and I got the fuck out of there. Started doing some uh, live video stuff for a couple of different sites, and then I reached out to uh, Shane here at Game Trailers because I heard they were hiring and he invited me on Invisible Walls. And the rest is history. Um, the message is, yes, I have been a lucky bastard, but I do have X amount of experience to back up the bullshit that I do spill out of my mouth through you on a weekly basis. So yeah, that's basically it. So if you want to get into video game journalism or media or whatever, work at your craft. Figure out what your angle is. Don't sound like everybody else out there. Me, I'm lucky. I've got an accent, I've got 20 years of experience, and I'm not afraid to talk shit about people and tell them shit I wouldn't even tell them to their faces, because I will. Be passionate, give a shit. If you don't give a shit about it, you just look at it as a paycheck, fuck off right now. In fact, I'll say that to anybody in the games industry. I love this industry. I get to do something I really give a shit about, and that's talk about games, call out shenanigans when people pull the bullshit, and I, you know, I don't make a shitload of money doing it. It's gonna be hard work, but if you wanna do it, go out and create a video blog, create a regular blog, write, be yourself. Don't be a dick, don't be a caricature, build up a following and then, who knows, the sky's the limit. All right, that's it for this week. Find me on Facebook, Annoyed Gamer, follow me on Twitter, follow me on, what else is there? Get Glue, I'm on that as well. I watch Doctor Who a lot. Uh, Foursquare, I'm on Foursquare. We got anything else, Kyle, anybody? No, we good? No, Anton, anything else to add? Think about it. Anton says goodbye, so I say goodbye. See you next week. See all of our shows and game reviews now on the brand new GT app on Xbox Live and the GT Originals iOS app too.